Good afternoon or good morning, everybody, wherever you might be. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce Wojciech Szymański because today with his talk, we officially initiate our ski season. It's Wojciech Szymański. Our next speaker will be Tomasz Brzeziński. And uh, it's definitely going to be good mathematics on non-committed fiber bundles. Wojtek, the floor is yours. Take it away. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's actually my uh, first experience to give this online seminar. I've been already attending uh, quite a few of them, but it's, it's always a challenge to do something for the first time in your life at the age of, you know, almost 60. Well, not quite, but close to that. Okay, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, uh, all right, so, so first of all, uh, I mean, this, uh, this talk is on, a, on an ongoing project. I hope it will be going for a long, long, long time. Uh, and uh, uh, we have some uh, nice, I think, results, but lots of work, uh, of course, remains to be done. And uh, maybe most important, let me mention that uh, whatever results that I've been uh, somehow involved uh, with in this talk will be presented. They were uh, in collaboration with either Tomasz Brzeziński, the skiing guy, or uh, Sophie Emma Mikkelsen. So Tomasz, of course, does not need uh, any introductions, uh, certainly not uh, at this uh, seminar. Uh, so I will not introduce him. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Sophie is um, uh, currently you, my... Thank you. <laughs> so Sophie is currently my PhD student at the University of Southern Denmark in Budense. Uh, okay, so, uh, well, what are these non-committed fiber bundles? This sounds a bit uh, suspicious. So to begin with, uh, I would like to uh, start uh, with some uh, experimental evidence of existence of such objects. <laughs> and here it is. Uh, so I have captured this non-commuted fiber bundle. We can clearly see it here, All right? And this spot in the middle is a UFO. No, and I'm coming to that. And if you watch closely here, then you see here the unique classical point on the non-commutative ah. total space of the fiber bundle. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so now that we have existence and uh, somehow foundations of this theory put on a very solid empirical ground, so we can move on with some theoretical <coughs> considerations. So uh, first, since this is kind of ongoing project, and I mean, we are not sure, you know, where we'll actually end. So some loose goals, I mean, what we were thinking uh, about here doing this. So, so main idea is uh, here, this point one, that somehow we would like to develop a framework for investigations of non-commutative analogs of compact fiber bundles. Uh, uh, not just principal bundles, not just vector bundles. That's fiber. right. That's exactly the point. That's exactly the point. Non-commutative uh, com non kind of analogs of fibered, compact fiber spaces. Uh, that would be the idea. I mean, of course, uh, this is such a, you know, a general concept. Uh, so uh, we don't hope to immediately come up with some kind of axiomatic and so on. We want to somehow make some inroads here and what are the guiding principles, how we would like to proceed. So first of all, we would like to have, uh, we would like to build uh, on a class, uh, we would like to develop a class of interesting examples and have this theory somehow example driven so that you know some theoretical developments go hand in hand with interesting cases interesting examples so so this is this is one principle that that we would like to at least i would like to stick stick to here in this in this process now a uh, second thing and i will come back to this later in my talk that we would like to keep in perspective uh, both uh, topological situation and in the non-commutative setting, this would be captured by sister algebraic objects, sister algebraic considerations. And we would also like to keep in perspective differential setting, and uh, that would be would more correspond to, to purely algebraic objects, so to just pure algebras, not sister algebras that would uh, appear in, in this uh, development. That sounds more like algebraic geometry. 
I mean, well, I mean, differential, it, geometry, wait a second, differential geometry should be based on certain dense and holomorphically closed subalgebras of C style. That that's true. So so this this will not be visible in my talk. In my talk, uh, we will have uh, actually not in main results. I will come to that. But in examples, we will have situation that we have a C star algebra and a dense star subalgebra, which should be thought yeah. of as a polynomial subalgebra. That's, yeah, I mean, I mean, the analog of C infinity functions. I mean, that would be differential geometry. That's so right. That, three, that's quite three. correct. That's quite correct. So, the so geometry would be like finitely generated algebras, and that's it, basically. That's right. This, this is correct. I, I fully agree. That that's what we will have. Yes. So okay, I will well, not talk about C infinity functions. I will have polynomial functions. Yeah, and yeah. and sister algebras, yeah. Okay, great, good. Okay. Uh, 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 although uh, in in examples that will come up, you know, like Podle spheres and so on, of course, it is possible to build these uh, C infinity functions as we know, but but they will not play no role in my talk. They will be not mentioned in my talk. Uh, okay, so as uh, Piotr already suggested, uh, we would certainly like to go beyond uh, principal bundles. Uh, because um, I mean, we believe that, I mean, theory of principal bundles uh, has been uh, quite well uh, established already in non-commutative uh, uh, geometry. So this is not where we intend to make a progress. Uh, we would like to go beyond that, that picture, go beyond uh, principal bundles and look for examples and, and theory explaining those examples uh, that deals with uh, bundles that are you know, not principal in general. Now, uh, the last here bullet, uh, I, I say uh, save whatever possible from local triviality, but this is a bit tricky point. So um, here in the first bullet point, I say fiber bundles, but we don't want to talk about some crazy general fiber bundle. We would like to talk about uh, bundles that sort of look like locally trivial fiber bundles. However, however, we have no intention of uh, cooking artificially some local triviality conditions in non-commutative setting. Th this we want to clear away uh, from. We don't. We have no intention whatsoever uh, to 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 de to define artificially what is local triviality, whatever in non-commutative setting. Not at all. We'll take different different point of view. Okay. Uh, so well, these are. Now, roughly, if I might add very briefly, Wojtek. Uh, at least finally we know what local triviality means for a principal bundle. So I bet that if your fiber bundle would be associated with a principal bundle, it would also be locally trivial in a completely natural, non-artificial way. Actually, actually, this is an excellent comment. Thank you very much. Uh, I could not agree more. Is, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, well, I'm not sure if Tomasz agrees uh, uh, with me, but uh, I, maybe uh, he agrees that we actually took point of view that our bundles should be associated with principal bundles. That, yeah. that, that's the point of view that we want to take, mm -hmm. yes. Well, that <laughs> he agrees. Thumb up. Okay, super. So instead of that cooking up local possible. triviality, we replace it by talking about bundles that are associated with uh, uh, principal bundles. That, that's exactly the point of view. Paul, you wanted well, to say something? Well, that is, that is the case in classical... Uh, Topology and differential geometry. The, I mean, exactly. this, this was Steenrod's whole point of view. Mm -hmm. the fiber That's bundle fine. is associated to uh, a principal bundle. Yep. So, and, so and that's the that's do do this in the, in the non commutative setting. Good. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, so, so as I as I wrote here, these are the goals. So I'm not claiming that we understood everything here, but I would like to show some work that we've done in this direction, uh, have, uh, present some results, general results, and then back them up with a few examples. Uh, so, I mean, very briefly, of, of course, these are uh, uh, trivialities at the beginning, but uh, I mean, in the classical setting. Uh, a vibration means that, that we have some projection from the total space onto the base space with uh, some typical fibers F. And uh, what I would like to keep in mind, the uh, kind of models that I would like to think of 
uh, are, are is uh, compact uh, cases of differential differentiable manifolds. Now, uh, once again, we already discussed that, so so I will not spend too much time on that. But uh, <clears throat> but uh, the local triviality uh, condition, uh, we would like to think of locally trivial bundles, but uh, not by some artificially cooked up uh, local triviality uh, definition in a commutative setting. So please note in particular that we will not talk about any analogs of transition functions or anything like that as in the classical case. So, so we would like to build a theory of locally trivial bundles, but not going by this kind of constructions, uh, you know, like trivializations, transitions, functions, uh, this kind of uh, things. So um, examples that we would like to uh, look for non-commutative analogs. Okay, I said we want to go beyond principal bundles, but of course principal bundles uh, will, uh, uh, will have to uh, be at kind of at the core of our constructions because uh, as we already mentioned, we would like to cook up something that looks like bundles associated to principal bundles. Uh, and uh, going beyond principal bundles, uh, classes of examples that, that, that we are thinking of are first of all sphere bundles. Uh, for ex in, in, uh, I will present some examples where, uh, of non-commutative uh, fiber bundles with uh, quantum two spheres as fibers. And I will, pro I will rather not talk about this because this work is, is not on paper yet, but we also think of uh, some examples uh, of vibrations of lens spaces, where you can have lens spaces also in the fibers. Okay. So, so these are the, the main classes of examples, classical examples that we would like to, uh, uh, to that we are motivated by, right? And we would like to build some kind of non-commutative uh, theory uh, of. Now, uh, the main motivating example that, uh, that I will present uh, some results in non-commutative setting of is an example that, you know, start with principal bundle and uh, taking a subgroup, a quotient by the subgroup, and you, you get a fiber bundle with a homogeneous space, G mod H, as, uh, as the typical fiber. By the way, Wojtek, there is, I'm sure you are aware of it, there is this beautiful uh, theorem in classical topology, which also works in the same fashion for hopf galois extensions of quantum principal bundles, is that uh, you can classify reductions of uh, principal bundles by sections of associated fiber bundles. Well, uh, fantastic. <clears throat> wait, wait, what, what, what did Piotr say? What, what is it there? But if you want to study, for instance, you want to study reductions of, uh, of a principal bundle from a, a G, a group to some H subgroup, okay? So, yes. so then, then to you can classify all possible reductions, there might be none. Uh, if this is tantamount to forming an associated fiber bundle where the fiber is a homogeneous space G mod H and global continuous sections of this associated uh, fiber bundle are in one-to-one -one natural correspondence with all possible H reductions of your G principal bundle. Oh, very good. Okay, yeah. Thank and and you. The, okay. the funny thing is that all this works really step by step. Everything has been worked out like a decade ago for Hopogallo extensions. The same principle works. Okay. Very, okay, thank you. Thank you, Pierre. Yeah, okay, good. All right, so uh, so let's move on. So uh, I think it's it's certainly uh, in place to, to recall uh, some facts about uh, uh, non-commutative principal bundles, and, and maybe at, at this moment, uh, let me uh, let me say the following: that um, the main results uh, coming taken actually uh, from a paper by uh, Tomasz and myself, which is out in the form of the preprint. It has not been published yet, although hopefully it will be soon. Uh, so uh, in that work, uh, we actually took purely algebraic point of view. So uh, the main general results that, that I will uh, present here in this talk will be stated in purely algebraic terms. However, I will also give some concrete examples and you will see that in examples, C-star algebras are uh, present uh, there uh, 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 in the background. So, uh, so that's the kind of uh, situation we are at uh, at the moment. 
and uh, therefore I will uh, here uh, talk about uh, its non-commutative uh, principal bundles in the purely algebraic language. And then, then I'll move on uh, to discuss the, the, the results that we have with, with Tomasz regarding uh, non-necessary uh, principal bundles. So uh, we want to take actually a very general point of view and uh, our structure group, actually we allow to be actually not a group, but a co-algebra simply. Right. So this is this is this is first point that one should notice that our main result will, results will be formulated in such generality that uh, the structure is provided by action of a co-algebra, which does not need to be a hop algebra. Okay. Uh, and uh, this is the this is the notation. We will of course consider the, the space of coinvariance, which I typically denote by B. So here C will play the, play the role of structure group. Uh, B uh, will be the, uh, the uh, algebra morally corresponding to, to algebra of functions on the base space. And uh, if we, uh, if we to, in order to de define you know, uh, a principal uh, bundle in the setting, one considers the, the canonical Galois map or, or canonical or C Galois map uh, defined uh, here. And the first condition that one would uh, like to have is that this uh, map uh, should be uh, bijective. In that case, the inclusion of algebras B into P is called co-algebra Galois or, or C Galois. I mean, this is, this is almost the principle, but not yet. So this is the kind of level of generality that, uh, that we will be dealing with. Now, uh, uh, the next the thing, so this is something that this is, this is uh, Thomas' uh, hobby horse, I must say. I, I learned about this device from Thomas, and you know, whenever we meet, uh, I, I discover new beautiful aspects of the canonical entwining map, uh, which is truly marvelous uh, thing. So, uh, so namely, a algebra Galois extension has an additional uh, symmetry rising from the canonical entwining map. Uh, defined here as follows. Notice that in order to define it, I have to use the, the inverse of the uh, canonical Galois map. So we have to assume that that canonical Galois map, map is bijective. And, and Psi is, a, as written here, is a device that allows us to transfer um, a right P module structure from this balanced tensor product, where of course, which is of course naturally right a, 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 a P module to this tensor product, which of course naturally uh, a priori does not have any right p module structure. Uh, we can we can write this transfer explicitly here as follows. Now, actually, this is the only slide uh, on which this canonical entwining map will appear. So you may ask, why why do I talk about this at all? I mean, no, sorry, not not uh, on the next slide. It will also appear briefly. Well, what, what is this? This inter canonical entwining map. Yes. What, yes, what that's is the that? In the classical commutative case, a principal bundle in the classical sense, what, what is this? What is this map? Well, I mean, I'm not uh, sure how to explain. P group G, let's say. Uh, oh, I think, let me answer, let me answer. Okay, go, go. Uh, I have plenty of helpers, so yes. I will just shuffle these, these guys uh, who know see, much more. I'm than curious than curious what so, this is in the classical commutative case, that's all. I, it's I, I, already, you see, it's already something very simple for Hope Galois extensions. It's it's basically something which allows you to flip between as Wojtek said. The, the very basic idea is to be able to flip between the left and the right uh, coaction. And when you do it for Hopf algebras, in order to flip your, say, right Hopf algebra coaction to a left one, you need to have the antipode. It's not enough just to flip. If you want to change uh, the group action from, from right to left, then, for instance, you can multiply only on the right, but you want it to be a left action. So what do you do? <coughs> you act by the group inverse. You can say that, that my left action of G on X is mapping X co uh, G comma X into X times G inverse. So you need this inverse. And because this is a co-algebra and there is no inverse, uh, you have to somehow substitute it. You, you, you cannot just demand that you have something like an antipode at the level of co-algebra, it wouldn't make sense. But when it comes to this flipping between the left and the right coactions, you can actually make sense out of it with the help of, of the canonical Galois map, exactly as written 
in this formula. And this formula becomes something extremely simple the moment you say that you have a Hopf algebra and there's a Hopf Galois extension. And when you uh, really want to be even more concrete and go uh, down to the level of groups acting on spaces, it will basically boil down to uh, having, a, say, to expressing a left action via the right action by taking the group inverse. That's the essence of what's going on. Well, cl uh, classically, uh, a principal bundle classically is usually taken to be a right action. Exactly. But um, sometimes um, for formulas, you also need to have a left action, and, and that is what happens here. Of course, you can convert this to a left action. I mean, that, that is what this is? Yeah. Well, it's, it's a flip, you see. Uh, classically, it would be like uh, you have G cross X mapped to X cross G. Yeah, but, but this, this, this flipping involves the group inverse. And, and believe me, it just, it's, this device is, is extremely important in any calculations you want to do about principal bundles, I mean, quantum principal bundles. Okay, thank you, thank you, okay. Okay, okay great. So thank, so thank you very much, uh, Piotr. Uh, Thomas, would you like to add something to this about this entwining structure or? No, no, no not necessarily. I think that Piotr explained it quite well. Although okay, I don't fantastic. really agree with his explanation, but uh, <laughs> I would like to <laughs> slide to you. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, let me just add that in a moment I will, uh, on the next slide, this entwining uh, structure will still uh, occur, but that would be the last time. But why, uh, but uh, I should point out that we rely heavily on this device in proofs. So in the main, yeah. in the statement. Exactly that, of, yeah. So this is exactly what Piotr mentioned, I would like to allude to this, that in the statements of two main theorems that I will present in a moment, uh, this entwining map will not be visible, but uh, we, we did use a lot of, uh, uh, a lot this, this uh, device uh, in, in actually in proofs, right? So in particular, the paper that, uh, that uh, uh, I'm, I'm discussing uh, is written in such a way that, that uh, you know, you, you don't need to, to know about uh, about these techniques if you are not interested. You can still absorb the, the theorems without that. But if you are interested in proofs, then, then you have to go to these kind of tricks, like with these. Oh, well, not have to, but that's the way we took and, and it worked for us. Okay, uh, uh, let's see one moment. Yes, we are here. Okay, sorry. No, no, uh, I forgot one more slide here before uh, I uh, state this. Uh, what is a principal bundle? So we, we will be working, and this will be the situation uh, that we'll be using uh, in, in a moment to state main results uh, in the so-called co-pointed case, um, uh, which, which corresponds to this kind of uh, situation. <clears throat> and then we can also uh, define uh, these coinvariants uh, corresponding to this group like element E according to this, this formula. So, so this is something that will be present in, in later on in uh, our uh, statements of the main uh, theorems. Okay, so here is the definition and E pointed that is uh, of this type a uh, Sigalois extension is called principal algebra extension, provided the following two conditions hold. First, the canonical entwining map is bijective, right? So here we put additional. Now, uh, I must say that at first, when I when I learned about this this structure, I thought that this would be kind of like automatic, uh, this bijectivity or something like that. But it turned out that this is not the case. So we have to assume it. And, uh, and second uh, is projectivity assumption. Uh, one has to assume that P is C equivalently projective left P module, uh, which means that there exists a B module and right C module splitting of the multiplication map, or rather re restriction of the multiplication map of P uh, from this tensor product to P. So, so that's uh, that's a technical that's a technical definition. I believe. Uh, I mean, I'm not responsible for it, so please do not blame me if you don't like it. Uh, but I believe that this has been uh, accepted quite commonly by at least by algebraists as a good working definition of a principal co-algebra co extension. And uh, to take care of analysts, Paul and Kenny DeComer and I, we published a paper when we proved that this is in complete agreement with the analytical definition of a principal one. Okay, so fantastic. I, 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 uh, Never had any doubts that this is the case. Uh, if so, I, if, uh, if I, sorry, uh, Wojtek, if I might 
may add something. So the, uh, this bijectivity of the canonical entwining map in uh -huh. the case of the Hof Galois extension just corresponds to the antipode in the Hof algebra being bijective, essentially. Exactly. Very good comment. Yes, exactly. And because, in fact, when you flip from left to right, uh, remember, S, uh, S squared is no longer identity for quantum groups. You do it with the inverse of the antipode. If you want to get the left coaction out of the right coaction, you don't just take the antipode, you take the inverse of the antipode. Which of course for groups you don't see, right? Because everything is uh, the inverse of the inverse is identity, but that's not the case for quantum groups. And uh, b b and and bijectivity of, the, of the canonical entwining map is as exactly as uh, Tomek pointed out is precisely the bijectivity of the antipode, which for for Hopf algebra basically always happens, surely for quantum groups. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, super. So uh, now we sort of uh, went through this. Uh, uh, concept uh, of um, a principal co-algebra co extension. So, uh, so now I would like to get closer uh, to uh, to uh, some result from results from my paper with Tomasz. So, uh, I mean, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, we would like to. Uh, Look at the the class of examples that essentially look like you know we take a principal bundle and take a, a, a subgroup and quotient out and we get a bundle with a typical fiber homogeneous space. Uh, however, we are going to do it uh, at the level of uh, co-algebras. Uh, so uh, so here is uh, essentially a setting, um, right? So, uh, so notice uh, we have a, a situation of epimorphisms of co-algebra. So, so this corresponds, like in the classical case, you would have group subgroup situations, right, with reversed arrows. Uh, so I don't think I need to to read for you, uh, you know, this these slides. I mean, it's it's sort of uh, pretty pretty obvious uh, how uh, how you do it. But once again, let me emphasize that everything happens. At the level of co-algebras only. These are not honest uh, Hopf algebras. These are just co-algebras. So this is fairly, fairly uh, general uh, setting. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, and now uh, a few uh, a few comments. I mean, first of all, I mean this is the the, the important objects that uh, object that that we will be looking at, right? Uh, and. Uh, and now uh, a few few comments. So by definition, A is uh, left B submodule of P uh, that contains B, and E plays A plays the role of the total space of the bundle with homogeneous fibers X. So I mean, morally, A is the algebra of functions on the total space. Now. Uh, here comes uh, uh, right, uh, the definition of the fiber, which again is, is, is motivated just like by, by, the, by the classical situation as uh, this set of uh, co-invariants. <clears throat> I mean, so, so this, is, this is very natural and, and looks exactly like in the classical case. However, here we arrive at the first uh, catch. Uh, at this level of generality, we cannot claim, and this is actually not true, it al always would not be true, uh, that X does not uh, need to be an algebra. So define X does not need to be actually an algebra. So, I mean, it, it's it, setting is too general for that. Uh, it's uh, uh, right, but uh, in many examples and under some, uh, I will uh, comment on this later a little bit, but under some additional hypothesis, X actually will be an algebra. So with some additional uh, additional hypothesis on the overall structure and in interesting examples, uh, quite uh, quite often this uh, this will be actually an algebra. Uh, however, uh, even if if it's not, uh, then um, it is a left seco ideal in this sense, which uh, follows uh, from the definition, and because of that we can uh, define uh, two objects that are of interest to us because they will play, play a role. Uh, we will state our uh, main results using these objects, namely the cotensor products. That is, we can take uh, these two uh, cotensor products. So, okay, I don't know. Again, I mean, I'm not sure if I should uh, explain somehow what these cotensor products are 
or maybe we have better experts who can kind of quickly say a few words uh, how to motivate this definition of or everybody can uh, accept it or, well, i think uh, it's just enough to to make a quick comment uh, that this is uh, like having the construction uh, the quotient construction of a classical space which is typically what you do for associating uh, fiber bundles so you take a cartesian product and then you have uh, some kind of a diagonal uh, group action on both ingredients of the Cartesian product and then you go to the quotient. But going to the quotient in the classical case, of course, will correspond uh, to having uh, sub-constructions in the non-commutative case, because what you are doing here, you are taking a subspace of the full tensor product. And, and, and this is exactly what serves as, as this associated uh, construction. That's right. So uh, that, that's exactly correct. Um, and it's dual to the, the, the procedure of taking the tensor product, right? When you have tensor product over an algebra, you balance it. This is the same here, but you balance coactions instead of balancing actions. And here, balancing coactions gives you a subspace, whereas balancing uh, uh, actions gives you a quotient space. By the way, uh, maybe, uh, maybe. Uh, is speaker allowed to ask questions or speaker of course. is not allowed? <laughs> and especially a speaker who is an organizer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so you know, I, I want to take advantage of such a, a such a gremium here, the body of experts. So does this cotensor product make any sense analytically at the level of sister algebras? Oops, that's a good question. Maybe, maybe yes, it does. Okay, it does. Make, okay, yes, so you must tell me how. Well, not now, but you, you can make no, sense. No, 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 I'm not saying now, but... This is uh, algebra, yeah. Okay, because this, I, I, it's not obvious to me that one can make sense of this at the sister algebraic level, but I would like to see it. Okay, so I, I will nail you down on that. Okay, you have to explain okay. it Richard, to me. So, so that's your work with um, about braiding, right, Richard? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, super, yeah. super. So, so, all right. Some braiding, uh, yeah. Our because the problem is not with the cotensor product, the problem is with the diagonal action. Okay. Yeah, problem is action, it's not a product. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Uh, right, okay, so, so let's move on. Okay, so time for some theorems. So uh, two main theorems that I will present are both taken from my paper with Tomasz, or rather Tomasz papers with me, because I mean, he did all the work. <laughs> Uh, I, I was just, you know, uh, sitting behind and making tea and saying, good work, Thomas, keep going, keep going. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, so uh, here is the, the first result. Uh, th this is, uh, okay. Uh, so we start with a principal co-algebra extension. Notice the level of generality here. And we have the setting, you know, uh, this group, subgroup situation at befo as before, A and X are defined as uh, above. Then uh, we can uh, uh, claim a few things. Namely, first, uh, the coaction or restricts to the isomorphism of left uh, B modules. I mean, let, let me just go over these and then I will comment on that. The second, A is a, a projective left B module. And then uh, the canonical uh, uh, Galois map restricts to the isomorphism of left uh, P modules they stated as uh, here. So, uh, so we are very happy about uh, these results because they somehow confirm to us uh, that, that we have in place the situation of uh, some kind of non-commutative fiber bundle with the total space A, the base space B, and the fiber X. That's exactly how these results uh, look uh, uh, to us. So, so maybe let me, uh, I, I have kind of written a few comments here. By the way, so, the, have you considered having full screen uh, so that we don't see this? Uh, full screen. Uh, bigger. Okay, I can, I can put it into here. full screen. Is it better? Yes, of course. Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, good. Uh, so uh, uh, the first statement uh, says that A is a module of sections of a fiber bundle associated to the principal bundle uh, uh, represented by P. Uh, and heuristically, of course, that X is, uh, is uh, the fiber, right? 
So if you look at this, this is exactly the situation of a fi fibration, right? So uh, as a matter of fact, exactly because of this, uh, 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 this isomorphism, we sort of claim that that X is a fiber because notice we do not have like, we cannot define in this situation fiber by taking some, you know, projection and then inverse image of, of some points. I mean, this does not exist here at all, right? So as a matter of fact, I mean, when we first uh, thought about this concept of an uncommuted vibration, I mean, okay, it's completely obvious uh, that, okay, total space is represented by some algebra and then, then you have, uh, you have some subalgebra as the base space, but where, how do you get the fiber, right? I mean, uh, how do you get the fiber? You cannot take a classical point and mm -hmm. some kind of inverse image of, of the projection. And, and this is exactly this formula, at least in my mind, actually justifies uh, uh, this saying that we have vibration with, with typical fiber X, yeah. right? So that's, that's the way we do it not naively as, as, uh, as uh, mimicking classical case. Uh, of course, the, the, second, uh, the second statement uh, here uh, uh, is, is very important for us. And, uh, and the, the, I, mean, uh, I mean, the projectivity, right? It will uh, somehow correspond to, 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 to local trivial situation. And, uh, and uh, the third comment is what I uh, quickly alluded to already before, is that at, at this level of generality, we do not claim, right? Uh, sorry, I, I, for A, uh, no, no, I didn't ma mean A here, I, I, I meant uh, X. Uh, this is a typo here. Uh, so uh, at this level of generality, the, we cannot claim uh, that all objects here are algebras, uh, but, uh, but in in uh, examples, we we will have uh, we will have this uh, this case. But but in the Hofgala situations, you would have an algebra. Okay, so so this is the the second theorem. Uh, okay, so uh, so this is uh, this is the uh, the the second theorem. In, in which uh, we do exactly this situation that, uh, that we consider an, a background symmetry encoded by Hopp algebra. So, so what do we mean by background uh, symmetry? This, this could mean that, for example, C itself is a Hopp algebra, but not necessarily. Uh, this could be even larger Hopp algebra, as it actually the case uh, in an interesting example of, of a, a quantum in instant on bundle that I will mention briefly later. So, so, uh, so this particular nice case when there is some, some larger, actually honest Hopp algebra, which provides some kind of uh, 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 symmetry that, that controls this geometry. And, and then, uh, then things are, are actually uh, nicer. So, uh, okay, so, so here uh, there is a listing of these, uh, these conditions uh, which make it precise, uh, the statement that, uh, uh, that H is, is this, this uh, provides this background symmetry. Um, again, I, uh, I don't feel like uh, reading this line by line. I mean, uh, 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 I mean, this uh, this was actually. I mean, we, we came up with that by looking at looking at uh, at uh, at example actually at an example uh, uh, coming from the uh, from the uh, non commutative instant on by bundle uh, produced by the Italian mafia. Maybe maybe I could ask if Thomas has something to add here. Is there some some other explanation? By, but uh, but the one that I just mentioned that. Uh, that this is motivated really by uh, by by the example of of uh, of the instanton bundle, Tomas. I have to admit I don't remember exactly. You no, know, uh, it was the at the moment. I mean, you came up with this at the time when you sent me to do the tea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm but just your reasoning a bit, but no, seriously. Uh, I mean, it, it really arises from the. I mean, it, it's not easy to explain in the few words. I mean, there, there is quite a lot right. of uh, uh, algebra involved. 
And there is a particular class of those entwining structures we, which comes from uh, coactions of uh, algebras on the, or coactions of algebras on algebras through the intermediate of algebra. And uh, when you put all this together, you can come up with uh, uh, conditions like this, but this is really uh, hard to explain in the... Uh, yeah, I, I don't see any quick uh, kind of. Um... No, the, 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 I, I don't don't think there is. But uh, so I mean, the the second bullet point tells us that the, so um, H acts on C in a way which is compatible with the algebra structure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's uh, uh, in other words, C is an H uh, comodule algebra. And yes, yes. I mean that's that's the key point, of course. Yes. Yeah, and and then once once you are in this situation, you there is an associated entwining structure to this, which arises quite naturally when you but when you have Hopf algebra around and when when you at some point has have some Hopf Galois extension. Exactly, but I mean. Uh, Okay, it's. I don't think it's it's good idea to to you know get bogged down with, with technicalities in this kind of talk. But the, the the moral here is the the message is that when you have some kind of actually honest Hopf algebra background symmetry, things become nicer. And, yeah, and actually, yeah, exactly. This is this is what you are studying here is the, the quotient algebras, algebras which you obtain by dividing a much right. bigger ambient Hopf algebra Precisely. by some. Nice co-ideal, but which is say only one-sided, and because it's one-sided, this is how we get generic podless spheres, right? Precisely. Uh, the quotient Precisely. is just a just a co-algebra, or or even if it's uh, a co-algebra, it can be easily turned into a Hopf algebra. This this uh, this multiplication is completely incompatible with coaxes. But I think um, even without bogging down in technicalities, and here uh, Ludwig or maybe Nicola, who are listening, can weigh in. Um, this was very deeply motivated by this instant on vibration. Uh, That's correct. This is exactly correct. I already said that. Yes. You look at the seven as as a homogeneous uh, space, and uh, then uh, so, so you have have some big Hopf algebra coacting on your seven. I mean, waxman seibelman spheres are, are defined by Waxman and Seibelman as homogeneous spaces. But then you want to have this induced and free SU2-like action. And, and, and this is a, a trouble because in order to recover this SU kind of two uh, subgroup in this big uh, Hopf algebra, you, you have to caution by an idea which refuses to be uh, two-sided. And That's this right. is get to algebra coactions and <sighs> then computing coaction invariance of algebra and so on and so forth was very complicated, but it was done by the Italians. And I, Ludwig, I don't remember, you were involved in it, right? Yes, yes, he was. Uh, he was uh, under his neck involved in that. Yes, absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm part of this of this group, which was nicely called by Wojtek. <laughs> well, I use the word but, mafia, but meaning only the positive. Uh, only okay, the positive. I understand. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so no, but, here but are the... strictly speaking, it was some time ago. So, and also it's hard, but there were problems. Yeah, with. with... Precisely of that type, yeah. That this was. I, I will come back to this example. This will be actually my. I, I will. I will come back to to your instant on bundle in a moment okay. uh, when I go to examples. But uh, let me. Uh, uh, so so here are the the stronger the additional. Uh, 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 claims, the, not claims, the additional uh, uh, facts we can squeeze out of that situation under the stronger hypothesis. And uh, let me maybe comment on this one here, uh, this identity, uh, the, uh, I mean, isomorphism. So uh, I didn't write anything like that in theorem one, but as a matter of fact, uh, because I wanted to keep it simple, uh, but as a matter of fact, we have an analog of this uh, in the setting of theorem one. However, in that case, in this tensor product, A stands on one side and on the other side, we have a different space, some kind of A bar. And uh, uh, which at first we thought that we, 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 we are sure that it has to be the same A. And then we realized with Tomasz that no, we cannot get rid of it. Uh, without this Hopf algebra background symmetry, if we only play with these co-algebras, we get a similar formula, but with some crazy 
A bar, which is typically different from A in general. So this is an, I didn't want to, to discuss it because the things, it's become messy a little bit and complicated, uh, but that's the situation uh, when you talk only about co-algebras. Uh, which is uh, a little bit intriguing uh, uh, and, and perhaps uh, uh, should be explained further, but I, I personally cannot, cannot explain that phenomenon at this moment yet better. So, so I, I skip it. Maybe Tomasz will explain it in his talk. Uh, I don't know uh, <laughs> if he will speak on this topic at all, uh, but, but that's, that's just what I wanted to, to, uh, to mention uh, in, in connection to this, this formula. Uh, now, uh, my second comment listed here, I mean, the, also this special case is, is, is given here. This is interesting special case of that theorem when C is actually itself an honest Hopf algebra, but it doesn't have to be, right? The situation can be more general. Now, uh, I should now come back to this algebras versus sister algebras. So, so notice that everything so far is purely algebraic. We have not mentioned any sister algebras at all. But in, in interesting examples, sister algebras come up immediately, naturally. Uh, and at least to me, it is not obvious how to axiomatize the relationship between the purely algebraic setting that, that I'm talking about here and uh, sister algebraic somehow counter counterpart. Uh, I, I, th I think there is still uh, some... Uh, some room here for, for development of this, uh, to match somehow this, this algebraic uh, development with some, uh, some uh, sister algebraic counterpart. But what, like the level of generality of co-algebra is co-acting, it might not be that easy. Th that's right, that, that's quite, but even assuming Hopf algebras, I, 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 I still, don't quite, maybe that's better going to quantum better. books. I mean, you have a fighting chance. You take Richard, you make him a cup of tea and yeah. still do a good work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not saying this is impossible, but I'm just saying this, it's not completely obvious. Yeah, I agree. I fully agree. How, how to co proceed algebra, here. Uh, algebra, it seems tough. I mean, there are, you know, there are some, some uh, cases because several maps that we are talking about here are, are typically discontinuous. Yeah. Uh, in the setting of quantum groups, and you know, some maps would be continuous, some discontinuous, and and and, and uh, you know, there are some difficulties. I already mentioned one, uh, you know, how to deal with these cotensor products and so on. So, so, so this is definitely some non-trivial questions here uh, uh, linger. And I think Elmar can weigh in into because once we looked uh, into the decomposition of uh, SUQ two. But according to these uh, generic Podlesch vibrations, not the standard one, uh, because mm -hmm. you still have a Z, Z grading, you, 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 you can Z grade the whole uh, SUQ2 algebra, uh, but, but now you're, you're, these are modules over generic Podlesch spheres, not the standard ones. So they are one-sided modules, not by modules. And, and with Elmer, we try to figure out how these things uh, are compatible with the usual stuff. And I remember Elmer produced something unbounded very quickly, I, it was 10 years ago, so I don't remember exactly, but this is why I, I have it in my mind that it's difficult to marry together co-algebra, co-actions and uh, norms. Yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's defi definitely the, the case. I mean, that I, I, I also feel the same. Okay, uh, so, uh, so let's uh, move on. And, and here, I mean, the Italians are already were mentioned a few times, so, so we have... Uh, uh, the the famous uh, quantum instant on bundle. So so I would like to move now uh, to some uh, uh, examples, right? Uh, so uh, so the actually very important motivating example for us uh, came from uh, the quantum instant on bundle constructed by um, uh, Francesco Bonecchi, Nicola Ciccoli, Ludwig Dombrovsky, and Marco Tarlini. So how uh, are they listening to your talk? Sorry. So again, Half of them are listening to your talk, Nicola and Ludwig. Ah, okay. I'm I'm pleased uh, 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 to to hear that. Uh, mm. Okay, so uh, so this is a, a Q analog of a, of a classical uh, instanton bundle uh, that looks like this. So I'm using this notation here. I of course meaning the total space. I mean. Uh, so I, I, I'm writing just these symbols like for classical spaces. I'm not adding, you know, symbols for algebras here, uh, but this should be, of course, appropriately understood. This is done on the level of, uh, of algebras. 
Now, um, here, uh, SUQ2 is here quantum SU2 of Voronovich, but as, as was already mentioned uh, here a few minutes ago, I mean, in this very interesting construction, uh, the action is only as a, I mean, not a little bit more than that, but it's a co-algebra action, right? The, 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 the action does not uh, preserve, it's not, uh, uh, does not respect multiplication. It's not an algebra homomorphism. Uh, so and you can easily action. see why it happens, Wojtek, because you want to have, normally you would have SU2 block diagonally in, 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 in inserted inside into SU4. But right? you cannot do it. But you cannot do it here because, because A would not commute with itself, right? Precisely. Which is why you have to abandon whole algebraic picture if you want to have these instant bundles. That's right. But nevertheless, you save, you get a very good uh, a principal bundle. Uh, mm -hmm. In the sense, uh, it satisfies all the con all the conditions are satisfied that, that uh, were spelled out above. Uh, so this is a very good example. Mm -hmm. Now uh, notice that in this case uh, there are sister algebras uh, present uh, uh, here. Um, uh, in particular, the total space. Uh, this is the uh, the quantum uh, seven sphere of Waxman and Seubelman, mm -hmm. right? So uh, of course it, there is this polynomial algebra, but but very well defined sister algebra here, and uh, the the base space is a quantum four sphere, which uh, maybe somebody from the audience can correct me, but I believe that it was actually defined, that particular quantum four sphere was for the for the first time defined in that work mm -hmm. by Bonecki, Ciccoli, and Tarlini. I, I'm, I, I think this is correct, but if I'm yeah. not... Yeah. I, yes, this is correct. Yeah. That's Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, so uh, no, uh, notice that uh, here, the sister algebra of this quantum four sphere, is the minimal unitization of the compact. So this is like, you know, one point compactification, right, uh, of, uh, of, the, of the R, uh, R4. So, so this is very nice. Uh, well, but, but in a way it's kind of disappointing because you do not distinguish the dimensions. It's like a two sphere, right? When you well, go to a sister algebra, you lose the number four. Sister algebra doesn't distinguish it, but yeah. polynomial algebras are very different. And by the way, you should mention it, Wojtek, yourself. I mean, all sister algebras here are graph sister algebras. Oh, but, but this uh, uh, this was completely obvious to me, so I didn't <laughs> yes, think like that. But... <laughs> uh, now, um, uh, OK, so I think that in this uh, audience, I mean, people are very well familiar with, of course, SUQ2 and, and, and uh, the seventh sphere. But I think, uh, I, I don't know, but uh, perhaps this uh, fourth sphere is somewhat uh, somewhat less uh, maybe maybe some people are less familiar with but uh, so I did uh, in order to 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 you know somehow get a better hold on it I did a little bit of quantum photography <laughs> and I took actually I managed to capture it on my Sony digital camera that's how it looks like this is a quantum four sphere Martin, you shouldn't mention any brand names. I ticked on our YouTube channel that we are not advertising any product. Okay. And uh, since we already know how it looks like, uh, so now, uh, okay, uh, we can uh, use this uh, quantum instant on bundle to construct some, uh, uh, some uh, bundles that are uh, not principal, uh, bundles with homogeneous uh, uh, fibers. So the, the obvious one is to take the, uh, the maximal uh, torus of SUQ2. Uh, sorry, this is not, uh, not uh, uh, yeah. No, this is not C, this should be D, sorry, this should be D. Uh, uh, and uh, if, we, if we quotient out everything, sorry, there's a typo here. So if we quotient out uh, this bundle by the action of U1, uh, the, uh, the, the maximal torus in SUQ2, we pass to the twister bundle, uh, which uh, morally at least uh, can, uh, can be written in, in this way. And uh, mm, I mean, the, the conditions uh, of the, of the uh, theorem two, I mean, so here theorem two works in this case. And uh, algebraically, of course, everything works fine as provided by the theorem. In this case, everything works also very nicely on the level of uh, sister algebras. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, uh, in particular, this uh, CP1Q is, I mean, the same uh, uh, as the standard uh, Poldi sphere. Uh, these, this is the uh, quantum complex projective free space of uh, Waxman Seubermann. Uh, however, only on the sister algebra level, not on the polynomial algebra level. Uh, it's, it's not completely obvious. It requires a proof that on the sister algebra level, uh, this is, uh, this is, uh, and this is the same as the waxman sorbelman uh, sphere. So, uh, uh, by the way, this... Space. Hello? Yes? Projective space. Ah, projective space. So, by the way, this work uh, is taken from my paper with Sophie, uh, which is uh, also available on the archive uh, as, as a, a preprint where we analyze this uh, bundle. Uh, so, um, uh, I will not go into details, but uh, instead of going to the circle, one could uh, one could go here to cyclic subgroups and uh, look at and quotient out right by by the action not of the full circle but uh, but some cyclic subgroups uh, passing to lens spaces, and and uh, but this this work is is still not out, uh, so I will not uh, not comment on that. But here other examples are also uh, interesting and being actually they are being worked out. Uh, right now. Okay, uh, so uh, so maybe uh, for a moment I would like to come back again to this uh, uh, discussion about you know algebras versus sister algebras. So uh, so this is uh, still causes uh, some problems, and I mean in general I would like to say that uh, when it comes to this interaction between algebras and sister algebras in in these situations, you should expect unexpected. Mm -hmm. This is this is my picture of expect unexpected. Uh, some of you may have seen it. Uh, no, maybe I don't know. Maybe Richard or or Paul maybe have seen it. Maybe not. This is Everyone by was there. Hello. Ciao, Wojciech. I oh, ciao. There. Oh, oh. <clears throat> Roberto has seen it for sure. We have seen it together, right, Roberto? <laughs> so this is Pasha Balker. This is Pasha Balker that unexpectedly landed on the Nobis beach in Newcastle, NSW. This is not uh, Photoshop. This is picture taken by myself. Uh, okay, so this is un how unexpected things happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so let's coming back to these principal and non not necessary principal bundles. Uh, so uh, I should mention that uh, these quantum instanton bundles, there are actually quite a few of them around. And in addition to the bundle constructed by uh, Bonecki, Ciccoli, Dombrowski, and Tarlini, there are several, I believe, several other propositions how to, to do it. And in particular, at uh, some point, uh, I look at the very interesting construction by Landi, Pagani, and, and Reina. It was actually, I believe, after Chiara Pagani visited us in, in, in Odense and she uh, called my attention to that work. Um, I, I look at the paper, it's very interesting, a very interesting uh, construction. I will not go into details, but I would like to, to say a few words about uh, the, uh, the algebras uh, corresponding to the, uh, to the total space there. Uh, so, so the morally, this is a, a quantum seven sphere whose star algebra is defined by the following uh, set of uh, relations. Here we go. Uh, very nice. Uh, so, um, I must say that uh, when I first look at this and I try to do something with these relations, then uh, very, very quickly I developed a huge uh, headache and, and couldn't make much progress. I mean. Uh, you see, I mean, if you look at the, the first row or the last row, the, I mean, these relations look very familiar to us, mm -hmm. but uh, if you go down, uh, then things become worse. And, uh, and these relations here later down are, are pretty complicated uh, to, to deal with actually. Uh, so, you know, um, mm, they are actually quite different. They make things much more complicated than dealing with the, the usual, you know, uh, waxman seubermann spheres. So I actually couldn't make much progress, as I said, but you know, uh, that's why a person of my age should have a PhD student 
and luckily I do have. So I showed these relations to Sophie and she was actually able to, to make progress. I mean, progress, I mean, the, uh, in what sense? We wanted to better understand uh, um, what uh, star polynomial star algebra is, how it looks like, and how the sister algebra defined by these relations look like, looks like. That's what please, we wanted to. Please remind me, Wojtek, which, which algebra you are talking about right now? The the total space in the Landi Pagani Reina uh, 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 instant on bundle. But it's a, S7, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, whether it, it is. I think I mean, it's more, about yes. sim symplectic S7 as far well as yeah, okay. Seven. But uh, okay, but what we got uh, is the following. So, so first of all, I mean, uh, I don't know, maybe we missed it, but uh, we didn't see a, a basis uh, for that algebra, but uh, it's, it's uh, an application of Bergman diamond lemma that, uh, that allows us, uh, uh, that one can calculate uh, mm -hmm. a basis for the polynomial algebra. I should say, I wrote here quite non-trivial because, you know, um, when normally you try to find a basis, then you know you guess that there will be some monomials, and then you rotate these uh, uh, generators around to bring them to the desired form. However, here, the, because of these relations of this kind of type, you know, when you do the standard tricks, uh, once you correct something at one end of your monomial you distort things at the other end. Uh, so there is no actually obvious thing. It is no obvious procedure uh, how to use these relations to bring them to some desirable form. So this required actually, I would say quite some ingenuity to, to, to use this uh, diamond lemma trick uh, to find. But okay, anyway, this can be done. This was done actually by, by Sophie and the basis can be found. And in particular, this shows that the four generators of this algebra are non-zero elements of this star algebra, as we would expect. So there are no surprises at this moment. Well, uh, surprises came when we look at the C star algebra uh, generated by these relations. And, and this is what what we got. So, so this mainly work of, of Sophie uh, and Mami Kelsen and with a little bit of my help. So uh, what we what we uh, found out uh, that this star algebra does not admit any faithful rep star representation by bounded operators on a Hilbert space. By the way, this is uh, very nice, Wojtek. It's very nice that you bring it up because exactly a week ago, we had a similar discussion uh, where Shao Han was defining a certain uh, sphere with some new commutation relations. Our discussion doesn't have a C star completion. When I got an email from Gianni Landi, yes, it does. But you see, this is we should never take it for granted. It might happen that you don't have a C star algebra. No, no. But but let me explain. Okay, I, thanks. But let let me explain. It does have a C star completion. It does have certain representations. Uh -huh. There are some representations. The point is that there is no faithful representation okay, okay. of the star yeah, algebra. Okay. Yes. I'm not okay. saying there are no oh. representations, or there are. So. Uh, however, there is no faithful representation. Mm -hmm. So in particular, I mean, what does it mean not faithful? In particular, every such a representation as here kills X1. Yes. In other words, in the enveloping C star algebra, X1 is zero. Mm -hmm. And this is the only problem that we found uh, because once you take, uh, once you quotient that star algebra by the ideal, I mean, two-sided star ideal generated by X1, then that quotient admits a faithful star representation by mm -hmm. bounded operators on a Hilbert space. Mm -hmm. So once you kill X1, then the rest is okay. But, but we, there is no way to find a representation that, that sends X1 to something non-zero. Now, I must say, when, I, when Sophie first told me about this, that this is what she got, I, I could not believe. And I, I thought that there must be some error in the calculations, but uh, I, I check it carefully. I cannot see any error. The paper is on the archive. Anyone who is interested is very welcome to have a look and see the argument. There, there is a detailed argument there. Uh, um, arguing this situation. It's very surprising. I must say, this was very surprising to me uh, uh, that this is what came out. Uh, but- uh, Wojtek, but there's, a question, there's a question to you. Uh, yes. The question is in the chat and it's, it's about what, can you say conceptually, 
what forces X1 to be killed in the C-star computer? Well, I mean, well, conceptually, that's a bit of a stretch because you have to work <laughs> with these relations, you know, and, and prove that they cannot be represented. But essentially, you use positivity, you know, you use positivity of bounded operators that put restrictions on the spectra and so on. But, but I mean, this is, you can imagine that this is not a two line argument. I mean, it's a few pages of, 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 uh, of tricky calculations, but, but we have it written with full details. It, as I said, paper is on the archive. So I would be very happy if people look at it and check it. Maybe we overlook something, but uh, unless, uh, unless error is found, I believe the argument is correct. Uh, I personally cannot find an error. And, and, and you can represent it by some unbounded uh, operator. Oh, this right? I don't know. This I don't know. We, we haven't thought about representing it by unbounded operators. I said we only look at possibility of representing uh, this algebra by bounded operators. Mm -hmm. and, and we only look at star representations by bounded mm -hmm. operators. This mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. There is no faithful such representation, star, star representation by bounded operators on Hilbert space. Yeah. There could be different by unbound. This I don't know. I, I have no claim regarding representations by unbounded operators. Uh, but uh, these relations for X1, don't they imply that if it's some zero, then there's unbounded spectrum? Uh, I mean both positive and negative powers of Q, all of them. This, this is not how the argument went. The argument okay. is not that X1 would be unbounded. It's, okay. it's, it's a different kind of argument. I'm okay. sorry, but uh, yeah. No, no, it's, I don't know. Question. It's different. I have no idea. No, no, no. I mean, the, the analysis go via the spectrum, but the, 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 the thrust of the argument is not that X1 would have to be unbounded. It's the, the kind of forces is to be zero simply, you know, this relation. I mean, sorry, I, I, it's difficult to explain this okay, kind sure. of sure. tricky argument. But, I'm just uh, curious. It, it, it's, it's quite surprising. I mean, this, 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 this is very surprising to me, uh, but since we have a proof on paper, we believe it's correct, unless we are proven wrong, but you know, it's mathematics, so errors happen, but so far, I mean, a few people have seen this paper already. So far, nobody pointed out that it's, it's, there is something wrong. And I have a comment okay. from Elmar that uh, there is no unbounded uh, representation for this X1. Yeah, but you get contradiction with the first relation of the last one, of course. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what he wrote, the sphere relation, yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there is a sphere relation, yeah, sure, there is a sphere sure. relation. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I, yeah, here, the bottom, this is the sphere yeah. relation. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, so maybe that that's enough. Of, so this this was my just comment about this uh, tricky relation between you know purely algebraic and sister algebraic setting. But I should say that I mean uh, uh, so that I, I hope nobody takes me wrong here. Uh, there is nothing wrong with the, the absolutely and don't claim any error at all in the paper by Landi Pagani and, and Reina. This is as far as I can tell. Everything is fine and correct there. It's just they don't discuss these representations in their paper. They don't talk what the sister algebra is, and and this is what we found. I mean, I, I think the, the the paper itself is very good. It's very you know uh, idea is very brilliant, and I think it's very good example. It just there is some uh, some here. Uh, the, this sister algebra is not obvious. You know how to how to attach it there. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, so I actually uh, I will probably finish earlier uh, than I should. I don't know. Uh, I counted on longer discussions here, but my my last example and and actually this is this is uh, getting to the end of my talk is uh, the example that was mentioned actually in some sense, maybe not in this, uh, this uh, setting, but, uh, but uh, a good example in which, uh, I mean, a good in the sense that, uh, that uh, it satisfies, you know, it fits into this algebraic scheme of things uh, that I talk, namely to theorem two, but also uh, everything is fine on the level of, of sister algebras is the case of the full flag manifold of S quantum quantum S S SQ two SQ three sorry SQ three. Uh, so here uh, FM uh, QS I mean the full flag manifold of SQ three that is the quotient by the to torus, uh, which uh, uh, applying our th theorem two we get uh, so this is again this work is is based on my work sorry, Thomas uh, Thomas and myself we wrote a, a few papers on that. 
uh, we get the following uh, uh, fiber bundle. Uh, again, uh, we have here quantum, I mean, uh, quantum projective one spaces or, or quantum uh, two spheres, if you like. And notice that uh, there are two, two parameters here. So, so here we have generic, that is the two parameter deformation of, of a quantum projective uh, one space. Uh, at the but bottom, is it like we... Podlash or not? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, uh, yeah, um, uh, and, and here we have the usual uh, quantum uh, uh, projective to, to space. Oh, why did I put two here? I'm sorry, this is a typo. This should be Q here. There's no, two should be only at the top. This bottom mm -hmm. two should be Q, I'm sorry. Uh, so this is the usual Waxman, uh, Waxman Soibelman uh, quantum projective to space. Uh, okay, why this example is interesting? I mean, actually at first, we just did it with the standard podlash sphere uh, because then uh, we use the action, right? We have like uh, homomorphic algebra homomorphisms uh, for actions, uh, but uh, and we actually were, this was actually probably the first example that we worked out in detail and uh, somehow it, it uh, with Tomasz and it somehow motivated our uh, further work. But more recently, once we got this, this uh, paper, including these two theorems, one and two, in particular theorem two, then we were able to extend that work from the, you know, the uh, standard podlash spheres to this generic situation, when here, of course, we have to deal with actions by, uh, by co-algebra co -algebra actions, right? So, uh, so we no longer uh, can talk about only uh, actions, you know, homomorphic actions. But here, really, we use the full power of theorem two with the, the action uh, uh, provided by co-algebra only. And there's no parameter S in this uh, CP2 quotient space? No, no, there is no, no parameter S. Yeah, no. So you have it in the fiber, you have it in the total space. So sort of this right. additional deformation by S is going generic from standard. That's, only that's right. Fiber. It's a fiber by, yeah, yeah. It, it, it visible in the fibers, yes. Mm -hmm. This def S, S parameter appears in the fibers. It often happens with theta deformations that you have uh, them at the level of a total space algebra, then you compute coaction invariance of algebra, and lo and behold, say theta twist is gone. Yeah. So, so um, check. may I ask you one question? Yes, the, please. The S about the full flag manifold that I, I haven't caught. I mean, isn't the full flag manifold for just the standard quotient of SUQ3 by the diagonal torus, or is some non-standard? I mean, I, I'm referring to like, you know, in the classical case, you would take the quotient of SU3 by T2. That would be the, the, the flag manifold here. Yes, but I mean, does this depend on a parameter S, an additional parameter S that classifies what? A, well, it, it depends. It depends. The total space uh, depends. Yes, this is the total space. It depends on parameter uh, uh, S. Uh, yes. So this is not a. Uh, so so I, I I know what Nicola is asking about, but the answer. Must sorry, maybe because, I didn't understand. I'm sorry. Because please, you, you have you have this additional S, but this is a very good question. I, I'm I'm guessing the answer. You you should know the answer, uh, or Tomek is is that here what what, what you are doing. Uh, you are looking at uh, SUQ3 as a Hopf algebra, but when you look at T2, uh, uh, this, taking quotient by T2, you don't quotient by a two-sided idea. You, you that's right. By... That's exactly okay. the point. So that's the answer to Nicholas' question. This is how this yeah, extra that's exactly the point. parameter yes. comes up. I mean, this is that's precise. precise. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly the point. Yes. yes. Okay. It... Thanks. Yeah. yeah. But this is a very good question. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So. So yes, it comes up because the the yeah the actions depend on that. Yes. Uh, I mean, the simplest case is with the, the, the standard the podlash, right? When you don't have this yeah. S and yeah, this is like the usual, the, the obvious construction. So as I said, to, to add this generic case, it required, I mean, it's, com it's not obvious at all how to do it, right? But we had to use the, the full power of the, the, uh, the, the theoretical results that I, that I presented earlier. So, uh, so as a matter of fact, I mean, uh, this is, uh, this is the, the last uh, thing I wanted to say. Uh, I should say that we had a beautiful sunny day in Udense today. And uh, that's how it looked like. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, now it's uh, after dark, uh, so time for a little bit of um, bedtime 
uh, reading, so I just collected uh, the, the relevant uh, literature on which uh, somehow this talk uh, was, was based. Uh, so, I mean, the main theorems uh, come uh, from this paper here with Tomasz, uh, which is available on the archive and it should appear in algebra and number theory. Once again, we only discuss purely algebraic uh, setting in this paper. Uh, some adding sister algebras there, this is still uh, waiting. Now, um, examples uh, come from, from other uh, uh, papers. So uh, in, uh, in this paper, actually we discussed only the case of the uh, quantum flag manifold uh, uh, corresponding to the standard Polish uh, sphere in the, in the fiber. Uh, and uh, okay, some aspects of that were even earlier uh, published uh, here. Uh, okay, this, this example with the generic fibers is, is uh, worked out here in, in this paper. Uh, and uh, the details of, of the, uh, the, um, the twister bundle that, that I mentioned briefly here are in, in the paper of uh, Sophie and myself, which is available on the archive. In that paper also you can find the proof of this strange phenomenon related to the enveloping sister algebra of the Landi Pagani Reina uh, instant on bundle. Uh, and I also included my earlier work with Tomasz Brzeziński because it is relevant in, in for the, okay, I didn't talk about this, but uh, I mentioned that it's underway. We are working on um, some examples involving uh, quantum lens spaces, this kind of vibrations, quantum lens spaces, and uh, which where we will be dealing with uh, a quite a general <coughs> a quantum lens and weighted projective spaces as uh, as uh, analyzed in that paper. So, uh, so this is essentially uh, the end uh, of my talk. And uh, I don't know. I would like to show you this picture since the holiday season is approaching. Uh, by the way, this is a Banff deer. So it has right to be here in our seminar, participate in this seminar. Yes, this, this, this deer I caught from my window, you know, on my room in Banff some time ago. Okay, thank you very much for attention. This, this is all I, I, I have to say. Okay, thank you so much, Wojtek. So now we digitally clap hands. I don't know, I pressed a button with clapping hands. And uh, now we can really start the discussion. We still have plenty of time. Uh, so it's a very, it's, so Francesco raised hand. Francesco, do you want to ask a question? Uh, yes. Okay, so, go ahead. Uh, I, I, I see many hands raised. I don't know, I'm clapping and raising hands simultaneously. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Still learning how to use these reactions. Okay, so um, I have actually a couple of questions. One is about um, the first um, twist or vibration. When uh, you say that uh, for CP3 uh, at the level of polynomial algebra, uh, this is not uh, the standard uh, uh, algebra by Waxman, Soy, Bellman. So That's right. Is it because you have a different U1 action or? That's right. We have different U1 action. That's right. Oh, okay. uh, so uh, I, I, the action is different. This action is, is uh, because th this action is borrowed from this SUQ2 action. It's not the usual action. Uh, uh, that's right. So it's a different U1 action. So it's, it's not just uh, in, uh, let's say, in complex coordinates on the sphere, it's not just that each zeta i is... Uh, no, 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 it's a different U1 action. Uh, so that's why uh, we, we have a basis, we have description of the polynomial algebra. Okay, I said different. Well, uh, I, I maybe take it back. This is a very good question that you ask. Thank you. Uh, seemingly different. I mean, seemingly different. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, it's very difficult uh, I, to judge for me whether uh, on the level of just algebras, these polynomial algebras are isomorphic or not. I, I have no way of, of judging that. But, but seemingly, this is a different polynomial algebra. Uh, however, on the sister algebra level, it's the same. Okay, so and the other question is about the relation x1 equal to zero, right, for the symplectic yes. seven sphere. Yes. So, uh, so first question is, um, um, so does this mean that uh, you don't have a non-commutative fiber bundle in this case? No, no, you no. Don't... Algebraically, everything is fine. Uh, 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 I mean, as I said here, 
uh, I mean, in the star algebra, as long as you don't go to sister algebraic enveloping algebra, everything is fine. Okay. It's but not you... in the algebra. If you just look at the polynomial algebra, x1 is non-zero. It's, it's, it's actually one of the elements of that basis. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no, no. Okay. So, so there is no problem at all at the level of algebras. Uh, the, the, this, this problem with x1 being zero occurs when you try to construct enveloping sister algebra. But, but uh, following uh, Francesco's can question. We, if I continue, can we see the relations again? Previous page. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So, so, so oh. following uh, Francesco's questions, uh, in a way, uh, when you go to the sister envelope in sister algebras of everything, do you lose freeness of an action? Does it cease to be a principal bundle? Oh, I, I, I must say, I don't know. We, we have not looked at that. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, all we did, we, we calculated. Uh, so I, 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 I haven't even thought about that. I mean, the question is, uh, in what sense is a problem? I mean, maybe it's just pathological, but still uh, you have... Uh, I, no, I, I, I'm not saying that there is anything wrong yeah. on the algebraic level. I mean, I, I'm no, saying no, but only even what I'm on saying. sister algebra level, I mean, uh, it's uh, weird, but uh, uh, maybe it's still some uh, pathological uh, principal bundle or... Yeah, but is I'm it not a principal sure. bundle? Is it? This is a question. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I must say I have not uh, investigated. I, I, I cannot answer. And so uh, another question was, uh, is um, so when you're questioned by this uh, X1, uh, the sister algebra, yes. then you have a faithful uh, representation. Right. And uh, do you get something no, like, I don't know, a quantum five sphere or something? Yeah, that's like that? right. Uh, okay, I, I cannot claim for sure because we haven't checked that. Uh, but this is uh, this is an, an algebra which I think looks like possibly phi sphere, yes. Okay, thanks. Yeah, but I, I cannot claim that as a theorem, but it, it's quite possible that that's what it is. Okay, two participants raise hands. Uh, I don't just ask questions, go ahead. Yes. Tom, go ahead, you raise question. <laughs> Okay, so uh, maybe hands, a sorry. question uh, is an answer, mm -hmm. if I could. Oh, sure. Yeah. Answer to, to the beautiful question of Paul. Uh -huh. What this uh, psi is classically? Yeah. Can you uh -huh. write it on screen, maybe, Tomek? Huh? Tomek, Tome, can you write it on screen? Uh, yes, I can. If you give me some where. I well, just have to share your screen. You're allowed. Everybody's allowed to share screen. And also, okay. I, I, uh, who can start sharing when someone else is sharing? All participants. So you can share without kicking out Volk. Okay. So let let me try to. Yeah, we're all yeah. learning Zoom. I mean, it's not so obvious. We we uh, better do. We are stuck yeah. with it for next ten years, right? That's a, that's a future. Even if the pandemic goes away, we will not get away from okay. Zoom. Oh, maybe, maybe this. Sure. Yeah. OK, can you see my yeah. whiteboard? We can. OK, it, so it's green board. classical this map is a map from x cross g mm -hmm. to g cross x. Yeah. And uh, per x g goes to g xg so the answer is very simple so this is this dual psi mm -hmm. and uh, if we dualize this uh, so so first observation is that uh, this map is independent first of inverting elements in g so it works for monoids even mm -hmm. for monoid actions and uh, has nothing to do with uh, the Galois condition. Mm -hmm. So why uh, you have uh, this uh, very nice formula of uh, Tomek and Piotr uh, in, in the Galois, Hope Galois uh, in the C Galois uh, situation? It comes from the fact that if you have uh, a map. Uh, right. But, but uh, I... Tomek, please write the inverse of this map. Can you do me a favor? Write the inverse of this map. Why the inverse? 
Well, imagine G is a group, so we can write the inverse for this map. Inverse, it would be, uh, okay, so this will be psi, okay? Yeah, so, so this is psi, yeah. Let, let me use the same notation. Sure, okay? of course. So, so uh, let me move this, oh, sorry. <laughs> A little bit. And uh, psi inverse of G X, X. Mm -hmm. is G X G inverse. Exactly, you see Paul? So only in the inversion of yes. psi, you have to use the, this inversion, uh, but exactly. for psi itself, it is not needed. Yeah. Okay. Try again. Uh, so what is what is going on when when you have to uh, this um, dual map in this uh, hof galois uh, situation? You have this formula of Piotr and Tomek, but um, the idea is that even if in, in the non galois case, this makes sense. And this is something like uh, C tensor A goes to, and now you have A0 tensor A1 C, provided uh, there is a collection of a Hopf algebra or, mm -hmm. or bialgebra on A. So this belongs to, let's say, bialgebra H. And C is a left. H module coalgebra. Yep. So exactly. still, so still uh, this um, Galois condition is not needed. Yep. However, in the Galois condition case, you have very, inter it's, it's a core of Piotr's uh, and, and Tomek's uh, result that in the Galois case, these, um, in the C Galois case, this um, um, psi is unique and there is mm -hmm. a formula to compute it mm -hmm. in terms of the inversion uh, of the canonical map. Yep. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a full story of, of this um, technicality, but there is another aspect of this story much deeper because this um, map between these tensor products can be um, interpreted as, as a mixed distributive law be between, yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, and it goes back to seventies. Even, even earlier, because uh, the the uh, the grandfather of this notion is Max Kelly, uh -huh. the founder of Australian categorical uh, category theory school, mm -hmm. and it was uh, christened uh, in this way by Ross Street, who wrote yes. a book uh, about uh, formal theory of monads and commonads and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And this uh, monad is simply the, the functor of multiple tensor products with the algebra, and this commonad is uh, tensoring with this coalgebra. Okay, mm -hmm. so 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 the the the, the, uh, the age of this notion, which is very fundamental and general, is very very old. Yeah. However, this 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 result of uh, Piotr and Tomek then. In the Galois case, uh, this um, mixed distributive law is uh, uh, uniquely uh, determined by this collection. C collection is is is, is a additional value of this of this special case. Yep, yeah. I couldn't agree more. Paul, are you happy? Yes. Well. Uh... Yeah, this is very enlightening. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, May I also say a word, uh, just adding to what Tomek said? Go ahead. That in the uh, Calgebra Galois case, we have this uh, well, Galois canonical map. A tensor C is uh, isomorphic with A tensor over B A in, mm -hmm. the, in the notation of, of Tomek, on, which we see on the, uh, on the chalkboard. And uh, on one side, you have A tensor over BA, which in a natural way is an A by module, by multiplying from the left and from the right. Yep. And the uh, uh, Galois canonical map is a left A module homomorphism. 
Mm -hmm. And then you can ask how, what is the corresponding by module, A by module structure on the other side, on A exactly. tensors. Exactly. And uh, of course, if you have an isomorphism between you know, one uh, by module, the other is, uh, uh, well, just a vector space, you can say you can always transfer the structure via the isomorphism. And if you transfer the structure, you get exactly the, the, the there has to be some, maybe I will switch on camera. So I need to show something by fingers. You have to switch A with C. <laughs> and this switching of A with C is precisely recorded by Psi. Yeah. So that's how it arises from the, uh, I mean, this canonical uh, entwining structure corresponding to the Galois extension. So if I complete uh, what Tomek said, <laughs> well, but then you kill X1. Be careful with the battle yes. of two X1 comics. <laughs> to, produce, to produce this beautiful uh, Tom X and Plots formula, uh, one more property of the canonical map has to be used. Namely, it's not, an, not, it's not only a, a corrected uh, by module map, it's a, it's a, a map of corings. Yeah. So I, I think Tom X would be happy. Yeah. I, I am always happy, you know, that's my nature. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you Lord of Rings, of Corings, or Lord of Corings. Lord yes. of Corings. <laughs> I have a question. In, Go ahead. In the examples, so the examples, of course, are very interesting. Uh, in the examples, you have the co-invariant algebra. So this is the analog of the functions on the base space. So if you have uh, one of these vibrations, are there characteristic classes? I mean, if you take the cyclic theory of the algebra of covariance, does the vibration determine elements in there, which are the analogs uh, classically? So, uh, Paul, th this is fantastic question, but we are not there yet. We, this, 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 this is uh, this is future work. I mean, I would hope so. Yes, but no, we we don't we we have have not. Uh, I mean, we, we we have not done work in that direction yet. But but this is this is obvious obvious question. Uh, to to uh, to ask, and uh, I would hope that there are some positive. I mean, I, I maybe Thomas has. Some I mean, we, we have a trend Galois character. I mean, we do have it, and this is from this is how uh, these principal coactions were cooked up. So that we do have such. A yeah, thing. but once you pass to to this uh, associated bundle. Ah, associated. Yes, of course. Then that's surely yes. We have it for vector bundles. Yes. For vector bundles, yeah. you know, but okay, because uh, yeah, yeah. So, so no, no, no. So, uh, well, I, I should say that going into this kind of considerations, I mean, uh, what I would like to get myself, uh, I would like to get at least in the case of say two sphere quantum two sphere uh, uh, bundles, uh, I would like to get some kind of Gissing sequence. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, on K theory. That's what I would be very happy if I could get. Uh, uh, but no, we don't have it yet. I mean, but but that that would be one of my goals to to try to get an, a K theoretic uh, analog of the Gissin sequence for this kind of non commutative vibrations with mm -hmm. uh, quantum uh, sphere, say two sphere to begin with. Pumps, yes. Okay, I see that Edwin is also raising his head, so hand, sorry, <laughs> go ahead. Well, this goes back to a comment which Paul made right back at the beginning about C infinity subalgebras. Mm -hmm. so it's about mm -hmm. this uh, isomorphism or potentially not isomorphic uh, polynomial algebras is what would be really interesting is if you actually had to use something like holomorphic functional calculus. And if you use that, then you could uh, show that you really did have isomorphic sort of C infinity completions of these things in some sense. So, Well, I mean, I, I think that this is very po point very well taken. I should say that I don't see how to add it uh, axiomatically at the high level of abstraction that we took. In, in classes of examples that, that, that we are looking at, 
this, I believe, is fe more feasible to investigate that question because in, in the classes of examples, uh, I mean, one can look more concretely and, and I believe that that's a, that's a question that could be investigated. I do not see a clear path right now for this kind of formulation at, at this abs high, high level of abstraction, but, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a point very well taken, absolutely. I would start from examples because over there, I think there is a more clear path towards, uh, towards, towards looking into this. Okay, thanks. Anybody else? Any more questions? Well, if, if not, then I... Can I? Uh, Sorry, uh, I cannot... Go ahead, go ahead, Tommy. Okay, okay. so... Uh, is, what happens to this action of uh, SUQ2 if you add this condition x1 is equal to zero. Is there an action of S, SUQ2 on uh, S5, Q? Okay, I, 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 must, I don't want to, to, to take a guess. I mean, I, I, I haven't thought about that. I, I, I must say, maybe I should have, but uh, uh, I, I, I haven't thought about this. I don't want to take guesses, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 since I haven't Ooh. given a thought to this, I don't, I don't want to take any guesses. Okay, so, so my question was motivated by Piotr's question about mm -hmm. uh, the uh, lose, uh, lo losing of, of this um, uh, freeness of this action. But then it mm -hmm. would be an action on SUQ2, so I, I, I cannot see any action. Yeah, on even worse, yes. Mm -hmm. Even worse, yes. So thank you very much. I, I think something breaks down. There. That would be my guess, that something breaks down there, yes. But I, I, I don't know. I, I must say I, I have not thought about it. <laughs> okay, so to, to, to end with, uh, because there are no other questions, I have myself a, a very open question and a comment. Let me start uh, with a comment. Uh, it, it, if you want to somehow enlarge the, the bedtime story reading list, uh, this is very old story, uh, many, many years ago. I think it was uh, beginning of 2001 or something, because I remember I was a postdoc in Munich then. And when I bumped into some even earlier work of Peter Schallenburg and a PhD student of Hans Schneider. So basically they worked out all this associated bundle business in the Hofgarwa setting. It's been already done 20 years ago with very full details. And it's a very nice construction. It's 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 non-trivial. This this is uh, it takes a lot of uh, work to do it carefully and systematically. And then uh, it's just that these uh, people are not really interested. I mean, Peter at least is not interested usually in geometry. So for them, it was just plain algebra. Uh, but for me, it was immediately was well, like in Hughes Muller's book on associated fiber bundles and and everything works. So with Rainer Matas, we took it a step further than they did. And uh, uh, so, so definitely, well, I, I can try to find it for you, uh, the, the, these references to at least mm -hmm. Schreibel's work uh, on, on this matter. But it's not so easy because we are talking 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then with Liner, we took it a step further and uh, we, we then did it. We did actually, we added only one more step to Schreibel's work, one more step. Uh, but this was the step which made the perfect correspondence between the algebraic, Hopf Galois algebraic picture and uh, his Moller's uh, book, Classical Topology Picture. It's exactly everything happens as it should. We have a one to one correspondence between sections of associated fiber bundles, uh, where the, the fiber is G mod H, and H reductions of a G principal bundle. There's a beautiful one to one correspondence. Everything is in algebra, everything can be made sense of. Um, and it's, 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 I find it fascinating because uh, this is uh, where you get quite deeply into the, the, the topological issues and you can do everything in algebraic terms. However, there's a strange phenomenon that if you don't submit a paper for publication, it doesn't get published. I don't understand why it happens, but it happened to us. <laughs> we didn't submit it for publication and it didn't get published. So this is one of these strange phenomenons. And, and, uh, and, and, but it's been done. So I, I'll be happy to, to explain to you everything. And, be, and we tried, I must say, this is why it's so exciting for me what you're doing, because we tried to make sense out of it for C. Galois, because C. Galois was already around and we're working on it. 
uh, but but we bumped exactly to such problems like well how do this is not an algebra what do we do with it it's just a module and at a certain moment uh, we decided that we cannot do any any substantial progress beyond <laughs> Uh, so I'm happy to see that right now it, there seems to be a light in the tunnel and, and uh, there is some new stuff coming up. So this was a comment uh, in large your bedtime story list. Uh, and, and, and I have a question. So can you do, because twisters are very important in, I guess, general relativity. I even invited Roger Penrose to your seminar. <laughs> Uh, but uh, can you do some uh, things which Roger was doing in, in, in with quantum twisters? <laughs> Well, no, no, no. I, my, my quick answer is no. That I mean, when we look at this uh, uh, for, for us, uh, we wanted to have uh, an interesting example of a, of a general theory. And in particular, I mean, uh, 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 with Sophie in particular, we're interested in sister algebras that are related and how, how this, this goes. But no, we didn't go into to, to physics or, you know, quantum theory at all. Not at all. Yeah, I'm yeah sorry. just as an open question, of course, I'm, I'm, I, I, re I didn't expect from you any concrete mathematical answer, but uh, it simply occurred to me that the uh, twisters were invented for a reason. And I, I do believe price. so, yes. Uh, I think so, this bundle, even classically, is called uh, Penrose Twister Bundle. I've exactly. seen this. Uh, that's that's how it, some people refer to it classical in the classical. Exactly, and, and but but I never studied how Roger made such a great use of it in his uh, work. I, I never looked into it, but it seems to be a very important piece of machinery. There was even twister newsletters published in Oxford. I remember. Uh, so so it it might be worth having a look of, of why these twisters were so important in the classical differential geometry and see how much out of it would naturally make sense in the non-computer setting. I mean, it's just daydreaming perhaps, but... Uh... Very much hope that, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not able, I must say, for lack of knowledge to do that, but if, if someone with better knowledge of, you know, the physical uh, f physics background behind it uh, would get interested, that I, that could be... <laughs> interesting okay. project i think so i i think uh, it's time to uh, wrap it up so thank you one more time vertex for a very interesting thank talk. you very much for inviting me. you uh, you failed by three people to 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 uh, yes uh, to, to be our record we had 29 people attending and uh, we had 32 as our records but you got very close very close <laughs> and, and indeed, this is, but, but it, it, today was the largest representation of the United States. We, we had California, Nevada, Colorado, Pennsylvania, or, or Paul, you are in Massachusetts or in Pennsylvania? Uh, I am now, I am in, at the moment, I am in Massachusetts. Okay, but, but anyway, from east to west yeah, coast, this my was. My job is in Pennsylvania, though. Yeah, yeah. So, so the United States is... was today very broadly represented. I'm very happy about it. Uh, and. Um, uh, this is indeed a, a Christmas wishes, holiday season wishes from all of us organizers, because uh, our next talk with Tomek Grzyzinski will be on the 13th of January. And then on 20th of January, we will have Moritz uh, Weber. And uh, on 27th of January, we'll have uh, Soren Alias. And then we'll have a month long break for the semester break. So this is how it looks like. So one more time, happy holidays to all of you. Happy New Year. And uh, we will meet again on the 13th of uh, January. Thank you very much. And if I might request, uh, Wojtek, please send me, uh, after you correct the typos, please send me the slides. OK. OK. And Wojtek, uh, I remember yeah. you Hello, from Carla. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Colorado. You. Finally, Colorado is on board. Yes, this is. Uh, well, <laughs> I was very busy with the finals oh, and teaching oh, this Carla. But now oh, I'm Carla. ready to start again. Oh, Hi, Paul. Oh, hello, Carla. Hello. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, very good. Very good. Very good. And um, yeah, so 13th of January it is. And uh, it's Tomek Grzyzinski, who will send me entitled abstract sometime. Uh, after Christmas, I suppose. And uh, then when we resume. Okay, for the time being, all the best and see you next year. I stop recording next year. Bye. Bye. See you next year, guys. Bye.